Welcome to the Love to Dev YouTube channel. This is Chris Love, and today I'm going to show you how to use the network waterfall in your favorite browser's developer tools to debug and analyze your site for web performance optimization. And as usual, we're going to look at uh, the movie application, and we're going to start off here in Internet Explorer, and we're going to look at the network tab, and you see I just loaded it up, so we've got a waterfall going on here. And by default, um, Internet Explorer uh, turns off, does not have the uh, the waterfall capability turned on, um, and they do this because it is a slight performance hit uh, to uh, to kind of intercept the pipeline there, and so they make this an optional thing for developers because you may not always want uh, this on by default. Uh, the next thing we can do, if you look at the toolbar here, is we can export the captured traffic, and this is very useful if you've got something to analyze the uh, network data XML. I believe this actually is in hard format, I'm not totally sure, but uh, it's useful to kind of log this if you want to analyze it in an external tool. Uh, we could always clear the browser cache, and uh, oh, I skipped over one here. Uh, this one is to always uh, refresh from the server, that means kind of ignore the cache. If you want to clear the cookies, you can clear the cookies. And I always leave clear entries on upon navigation or on navigate because it'll just be an additive thing and that gets really confusing. It's not quite as useful to me. Um, and then we can also uh, clear all the entries. Okay, so those are some real quick things. Now we'll kind of look at what the waterfall is, but to do that, I'm going to need to refresh the application. So I'm just going to hit Control F5 and you can see everything has loaded. Alrighty, we've still got some things loading in, but that's okay. They're kind of uh, lazy loaded kind of things. So what we're looking at here is uh, your basic uh, waterfall. Now normally I'd have a little higher resolution so it wouldn't look so small, but we can scroll down and we can kind of see how assets get loaded. And I'll explain to, to you what's going on with some of these uh, as we go through. There's different kinds of requests that are required to compose uh, any web page or web application. Um, the first one is a request to the server to get markup. That markup is then parsed by the browser and additional assets are requested. As you can see here, here's the, the HTML, which is followed by CSS. That was initiated first because obviously that's in the header. And then when we got down at the very bottom, we uh, requested, uh, well, actually the virtual earth scripts need to get called because they, uh, do not work if you lazy load them uh, or do not load them uh, ahead of everything, which is uh, kind of a negative, but we'll talk about that in another presentation. And then here's the code for the uh, for the application that we're, uh, we're working with here. Here's the background image, and then here are the movie images and so forth and so on. Most of what is on this homepage is going to be uh, movie posters because there's about 50 movies that are getting loaded. Now down here at the bottom, this is a, an interesting little thing that's going on here. And this uh, um, is not common because most websites are not uh, enabling offline mode like I do. Uh, but what it did was it loaded the application cache, which is the cache manifest file that is part of the application to tell the browser uh, what to load in cache uh, in the offline cache. Now you can see in the background, it went and called the markup all over again. It called the uh, CSS, the fav icon, the background, the app live, and, and so forth. And what it's doing is it's going to cache those assets for us locally. Now, um, you can see there there really wasn't a request going on here, and that's because they were previously cached. Um, and so it essentially just didn't really do anything uh, on those calls. Now, you notice here we've got a boarded, if we just expand this out, and, and the reason why this request was aborted, even though it did actually result in the image being uh, uh, delivered to the page to get rendered, is because it was already uh, uh, cached uh, by the uh, app manifest. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, cache manifest in another video uh, another day, but just know that it was kind of already available to the browser. Um, and therefore, that's why it aborted the call, because it said, hey, I've got a local copy that's good. And uh, the same thing happened up here. So um, what we're going to do, we're just going to look at the details here. First, we got we got the timings, and this is important for web performance optimization. 
and you can see what initiated this request was me hitting the F5 button to refresh uh, the page. And we can see that it took 141 milliseconds for this to come back from the server, which is um, uh, really fast. Um, and you can see that the payload was roughly 25 kilobytes. Now that's going to be compressed, and we'll talk a little more about the structure of the application uh, in another video, but we'll just kind of dig into this because it gives us some insight into the actual request. First, these are the request headers. This is what got sent to the server so that the server knew what to send back. And um, you can tell it supports uh, HTTP 1.1 because HTTP 2 is not fully implemented yet. Um, that will happen later this year. Um, tells it what kind of text, what kind of content we're looking for in this case, text HTML, what language. I've got things set for the user agent string um, that we accept uh, compressed content, the actual host that we're looking for. Uh, we want to have keep alives enabled. Um, and then the cache, there's the there's a cookie, which I believe is from Google Analytics. And then here's the request body. There was nothing because, I'll be quite honest, it came from uh, the uh, other request body. Uh, we didn't have anything set down. So we don't have any forms, right? So our data that would need to get posted. So there's really nothing there. And then the response from the server, we get the, the standard headers back, um, you know, just basic stuff that uh, we needed to know. Um, and here's the body, which of course is our markup. Just kind of scroll through that. You can see it's just your standard markup that composes the application. Um, here are the cookies. I don't really use cookies, but again, I thought this was Google's, and that you can see that right there. That's the Google Analytics. Um, you can see the initiator was really the refresh, which we've already looked at. But this is for performance. This is how you get more details uh, on the overall timing. Now, this is uh, really narrow over here because uh, all in all, it did to get all the images to come down. In this case, the images are coming from the, the Flickster CDNs. Um, it did take nearly seven seconds to get all of them. Um, so that means this is pretty narrow. And what we're going to do is we can see here we've got uh, a little key here. It's kind of showing us what's going on. Let me see if I can move this out of the way. I guess I can't. But um, we had a wait of less than 47 a millisecond. We had a start time. So this came really fast because it was really uh, kind of a local call. Um, and so it's not necessarily the best one for us to look at to, to get a full detail on it. We'll go down and look at one of these that actually came from the Flickster. So we can see that uh, we had a wait of 57 milliseconds. And that usually means that um, we're doing DNS resolution, things like that uh, up front. Those all count against us as far as uh, downloading content. You can see the request itself took 125 milliseconds to get down there. There it is. And the response took about 235 milliseconds to come back from the server. And that's where the actual content was. There's really nothing else we can kind of drive into here. Um, it is interesting to note there are some more details here. First is the DOM content loaded. So we can get that to pop up without expanding. I guess I'm going to have to expand it. That is, if you're familiar with jQuery, that's effectively where the jQuery ready function would have executed. And then the, uh, the final everything's done load event would have gotten triggered at six seconds. Okay. And this one's uh, pretty important because um, it kind of indicates when, when the DOM has been parsed and the user can kind of start interacting with it. This final load event means all the assets have been loaded. Um, so you can see there's kind of a gap between the two of those there. Now the reason is, is because I've got like 50 images that are coming down from the, uh, the Flickster uh, CDN to compose all those movie posters in this particular uh, example. Now I want to go look at kind of a common thing that most of us go do. We go look at uh, news sites and uh, I like to uh, keep up with the Texas Rangers and stuff from back where I grew up. So I'm going to load the Dallas Morning News here. And you can see it's taking a little while to get going. And there we go. It's still spinning up there. You can see the waterfall on the right is still kind of building. And the reason why I kind of want to do this is because this is one that's outside of my ownership. So I don't own 
the content of this, so to speak. So we're going to go look at the timings on this one, see if we got a little bit different here. You see this coming back, came back fairly quickly, 328 milliseconds, but the uh, overall load was 16 seconds. The DOM content, meaning it wasn't available for a user to interact with, was right at 11 seconds. So that's really bad. And you can see it's still ticking up here. It's still loading assets. But right now we're up to over, we're, at our, we're almost at 450 assets. We might, there we go. We crossed 450 HTTP requests to compose this page. That is really bad, by the way. And uh, anyway, so the waterfall gives you the ability to kind of see how long it took different things. So you can see right here, this took 4.29 seconds to load. Let's see what kind of file this is. This is their CSS file, and it's 245 kilobytes. Um, normally, uh, most of my applications uh, compressed. Uh, CSS runs between 10 and 30 kilobytes, um, so 245 for the base CSS is, is drastically large. These are things that I look at when I look at waterfall charts to find the bottlenecks that I need to uh, to address and need to fix. And I can guarantee you they've got a lot that they need to fix uh, with that. Uh, not going to keep picking on them uh, so much, but uh, let's go back over. Let's go over to Chrome, and we'll just uh, open up the movie thing so movies dot left dev kind of see it load up here there we go we'll hit f12 to open up the chrome developer tools we'll look at the exact same thing over here so it doesn't load it unless the developer tools are up so i'm gonna have to refresh so i did a control f5 to do a hard refresh and uh oh these are i was looking at ajax calls all right which is one of the nice things about the Chrome developer tools is the uh, the Ajax calls. All right, so very similar. Uh, you can see these are canceled because they came out of, they were already cached because of the cache manifest file. This is the way Chrome shows that. Um, you can see, too, we've got a similar timeline thing going on here. And if we uh, dig into this, we can look at the headers. Uh, we can see the markup and the response are basically the same thing. Um, I don't see that we get the, uh, let's see if we can get the timeline details here. I thought we could do that in Chrome. I guess you can't. All right. But that's okay. But you get the idea here, how we're loading stuff. It looks just like we did in Internet Explorer. Now, now a difference we can do is we can filter by type, which I really like in Chrome. And to enable that, we toggle this little funnel here to filter. And so it turns on and off and gives us just the request made for these types. So if we had media, which I don't have, for the JavaScripts, as you can see, there's the virtual earth, there's the actual application. And these are from virtual earth uh, for the most part. I think these might, be, these are Chrome extensions right here. I don't know why those always get included, but they do. Um, I didn't have to make any Ajax calls, and we'll cover why in another video when I show you how to do some performance optimizations for applications. I don't call any custom fonts. I don't know what text track is yet. Uh, we don't have any WebSocket calls and so forth, but, but you get the idea. Again, you got the waterfall here. We're going to look more at waterfalls in uh, future videos, and we're going to look at uh, how to use those, like with web page test, and um, how to really break down uh, the details uh, of some things so we can do some web performance optimization. But my first uh, place to go to is always the developer tools in my browsers, and uh, I can look at these waterfall charts, and I can usually spot common problems uh, and uh, kind of start uh, addressing those as needed. So I hope this has been useful to you, and uh, in the future you can uh, use these waterfall charts to help you kind of diagnose some possible issues with your application. Thanks for watching this video. Please share it with your friends and followers. Also remember to subscribe to the Love to Dev channel for future video updates.